The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hi, everyone, and welcome to a WordStream webinar, Building Google Ads from the Ground Up, Everything You Need to Know. Um, for those of us new to WordStream, you might know us from our blog posts, our awesome content, or some of our free tools. Um, but what you may not know is um, that we also are premier partners with Google, Bing, and Facebook. Um, and we have a software service that can help you manage those three platforms all from one place and help make online advertising easy for you. Um, we also have a very prominent social media um, presence, and we'd love for you to be our friends. So follow us on Instagram, join us on Facebook, Twitter, all of that. We want to make our community big, and you can kind of talk to other WordStream customers and people in the network of online advertising. And then last but not least, before I pass things off to our experts here today, this webinar is being recorded. Um, so you will be sure to receive the deck and the recording to your inbox within the next 48 hours, as well as we're waiting for your questions. So please keep, keep them coming, um, submit them as they come up for you. We want this to be helpful and interactive and beneficial for you guys. So definitely ask us anything that's on your mind while we're here. So without further ado, I will pass things off to our experts today. Hey guys, thank you so much for joining the webinar today. Uh, my name is Jeff Stevens. I'm a program manager here at WordStream. Um, specifically, I oversee our Jumpstart program, which we'll be referencing throughout our webinar today. I'll be taking lead on most of the material today, um, but I also want to introduce Marcos here as well. Hey guys, my name is Marcos Elrahi. I'm a search marketing strategist on the team here at WordStream and also involved in uh, business development. Uh, so uh, Jeff's going to be covering uh, most of the presentation, as he mentioned, and uh, I'll be talking more about his program, uh, the Jumpstart, towards the end. All right, guys, so before we go ahead and get started, this webinar is kind of covering three areas where you might be in your paid search journey, specifically with Google Ads. Um, folks may have not started accounts yet. Folks may be ready to start an account but haven't pulled the trigger, or perhaps you are currently working on an account but not seeing the results you're looking for. So really quickly on a po uh, poll here, are you currently advertising on Google Ads? Just a simple yes or no here. All right, we're watching them come through. And I'll share the results in a minute once we have more people have answered. Are you currently advertising on Google Ads or are you here to get started? All righty close it down and share the results with everyone. It looks like we've got about just over half of our audience is not currently advertising on Google Ads and just under half is and is hoping to learn more and get some of those account insights that you guys will have to offer. So we've got a mixed bag here. Very cool. So I think in both audiences, you're in the right place to learn a little bit about really the, the kind of thoughts um, and motivations that you need to have going into a paid search effort specifically with Google Ads. Um, so today's agenda is going to kind of follow those three cohorts that I just mentioned. So you're pre-planning a Google Ads initiative, where should you start? You're ready to launch a Google Ads initiative, what do you need to be doing to be thinking about that? And your Google Ads initiative is live but not performing. And then finally we're going to share our proven secret recipe to Google Ads success. So definitely stay tuned for that, that's going to kind of be the big reveal here at the end. So first and foremost, if you're pre-planning for Google Ads, where to start? Um, what I want to do is preface this section and in general this webinar with the idea that um, this isn't going to be a nitty-gritty how to click the campaign creation button and how to add keywords and how to write ad copy and kind of that basic stuff that comes with actually running an account. Um, this is going to be largely oriented towards things that a Google representative or somebody at an agency is not going to tell you about what you need to know before you actually start a Google Ads account. So hopefully you'll get some ammunition to help you make a decision here as to whether or not this will be good for you. Um, and if you do think you're gonna start an initiative, this will give you the information you need to gather before you get it going. So our key topics for pre-planning, we need to talk about budget planning and how keyword research ties into planning your budget for paid search. 
We need to understand your competitive landscape and your particular brand differentiators and how they're going to work for you. You need to have a perspective on your overall potential account scope, both in the short term and the long term. And there is a level of website readiness or asset readiness that you need to have before you consider running a paid search effort. So we'll hit all four of these items. So for budget planning, um, quite frankly, you have to have a preset budget before deploying a Google Ads initiative. I can't tell you how many advertisers I've worked with that tell me, well, you know, I'll spend a certain amount if I see this result. Or I don't really have a budget to work with, but I want to keep it cheap. This is just simply not a way that you need to go into running Google Ads. If you have a marketing budget, you need to have a dedicated set of budget for your effort. The main reason being is that Google Ads is very quantifiable. You can understand what your average click prices are going to be in your industry. There are tools that help you understand those click prices that are free. You can easily understand what the keyword that you're planning on bidding on is actually going to cost you and how much potential volume there really is. It's very easy to understand what an average click price is and then tie that back into total volume and relate that back to what your actual spend is allowed to be. Other things that you need to consider as it relates to your budget, you do need to carefully consider your geographic scope. Click prices do change between, between geographies. The click price for a personal injury lawyer in New York City is going to be exceptionally different than the click price of a personal injury lawyer, even in a city like Chicago, despite the fact that they're both major regions. It will be different. You also need to be realistic about your scope. If you have 100 products to run and you have a budget that could probably only cover 10 of them, don't build a campaign that runs 100 of those products. You need to start with the 10 that you think you actually have budget available for. Same thing goes with services. So in general, this whole idea of if I see it works, I'm going to invest more. Yes, that makes a little bit of sense on the face of it, but at the end of the day, you do need to have an initial investment that's actually been allocated to this that you can use to truly understand and quantify what your potential reach is going to be with your paid search effort. We're gonna get into some more detail about how to look at that, but a couple of examples here um, as it relates to keyword research. There are two free tools you should consider using. Keywords everywhere, so Keywords Everywhere is a free Google Chrome extension. This is something you can install today. You'll notice here that if I typed in a search query, Keywords Everywhere is gonna reveal a couple of things. Right below the actual search query itself, you can see an average click price indicator, a competitor indicator, and total potential monthly volume. On the right-hand side, you'll see keywords that are commonly related to that search query based on your region. It'll also give you average click price figures and potential monthly volume there as well. So do the simple math. Can you afford 200 monthly clicks at $40 per click? Is your budget actually able to handle that? Have you allocated enough spend to make that sensible? So Keywords Everywhere, again, is a free tool you can utilize. It's a Chrome extension that you can download today. Now, taking a step back, the keyword research tool in Google Ads is free. If you haven't even started a Google Ads account, you can still access it. It effectively is the same thing here. You're just typing in a search query and Google's delivering you exact cost per click metrics and potential monthly volume as well. It's fairly straightforward and easy to use and you can even put in budget figures that tell you what your actual volume is gonna be relative to that click price. Next major topic here is getting familiar and understanding your competitive landscape. Competition is extremely important to understand and just simply be aware of in the paid search industry. There are eight ad positions on the page. Sometimes there are only seven. So that literally means that you're competing against eight businesses or seven businesses at any given time. The reality is you're probably competing against closer to 30, 40, or 50 of them in your actual industry and the geography that you're targeting. So a simple thing that you should do right away is just search for yourself or search for your topics or your products. Quite simply, you need to see who shows up. Um, you need to consider global, national, and local competitors. Obviously, it's gonna be easier to position yourself and potentially outbid somebody who's local to you and is only operating at that scale. Um, but if you have a product that has a global appeal or even a national appeal, that budget needs to be tied back to that idea. Can your geography be handled by your overall budget? But additionally, are the competitors that you're working against simply too big for you to cut into? As a result, you might need to consider a strategy change or even scale back your overall reach of your campaigns. You also need to be very honest about what your competitive advantages are and the differentiators in your business. Uh, quite simply, if your pricing is not competitive against maybe the top four ad results that you're seeing on that page, you are going to have a tough time winning in that scenario. You will need to make sure that maybe your landing page presentation is significantly better 
the quality of your overall brand presentation is going to win that user over. Um, perhaps you're private, providing extending services to your product, whatever that might be. But these are things you really need to take stock of and list out and understand prior to competing against anybody in paid search. Do you sell commodities? A simple example here on the next slide would be somebody who sells USB flash drives. You need to be very careful about this. Um, this is a type of industry that's exceptionally competitive. Let's just look at all kind of the no-name brands here. You haven't heard of any of these people, but they're all trying to say, serve the same exact idea of a general USB flash drive. But also look at the diversity on the right-hand side. You'll see one that's selling it for 189. It's a custom flash drive. And then we have like extremely expensive custom drives with different sizes, um, different colors. It's really just kind of the smattering of stuff in just a basic commodity industry. If you look at this and you don't recognize anybody and you think you're kind of in that mix as well, it's going to be pretty difficult to break through without an actual budget that can handle that volume. Are you a drop shipper? This is another very difficult industry to penetrate. Um, you do need significant budget in order to make sure that you're able to cut through the level of competition here. Um, we'll use the USB flash drive example again. Um, but there are many companies that can make an exceptionally good margin on their product because of the direct manufacturer. Other companies are drop shippers and have razor thin margins and your paid search action and the overall click prices might really not balance out to make you a profit. Let's talk really quickly about a couple of free competitor research tools you can use. I've caveat this with the fact that these are free trials. These are two paid tools that you can actually purchase and subscribe to, but you are allowed to use them for free for up to seven days between both platforms. SpyFu is a great platform for you to consider. Um, it focuses mostly on understanding the competitor ad copy that's being utilized. Um, so it's more so about crafting your message and looking at what other examples are out there and how to maybe break through that language and that clutter that's occurring in your industry. SEMrush is a little bit better for understanding your competitor's spend level and how many total keywords they're running and getting insights into what keywords they're actually using. So you can find gaps in the potential keywords that you're planning um, or even realize that maybe they're bidding on things that are just totally outside of scope and you potentially have no, no reason to work against that. So SpyFu and SEMrush are great tools to utilize. Use the free trial. Again, today you can go and download one of these and start to understand whether or not you're going to be able to meet your competition in Google Ads. So with account and campaign scope, so the total number of products um, and service category campaigns is essentially just totally dependent on your planned budget and your keyword research results. Um, you need to understand that if you have, again, 100 products, but the allocated budget is only going to realistically work for maybe 10 total products and the average click price is associated with them, you're quite honestly going to need to start with those 10 products and really scale it from there if possible. You also need to be thinking about really the overall kind of funnel that you're building in paid search and with Google Ads. So for lead generation companies, you should be starting with the search network. That's a way to find people directly when they're looking specifically for the services that you provide. That is the intent-based marketing that we're all talking about here. But over time, you're eventually going to add the display network and potentially a remarketing approach to build a wider funnel of people getting introduced to your brand and then remarketing to them over time to try and find those users that have real intent that are looking to actually engage with you. In the e-commerce space, uh, two years ago, I would have told you that you should probably start with search. At this point, if you're in e-commerce and you're not considering a shopping effort to begin your journey with Google Ads, um, you're going to have a very difficult time seeing success and seeing ROI with your paid search campaigns. Obviously, over time, if you deploy a successful shopping effort, you're going to add a remarketing component. You might do some general branding through the display network, and perhaps you extend into the search network to fill in some gaps but e-commerce needs to start with Google Shopping. Now, over time, as you see success in Google Ads, consider going cross-platform, build in your structure into Bing. It's quite easy to just simply duplicate your campaign structure into Bing with the press of a button. Facebook is a totally different network, but it can create really good alignment between what you're doing on the display network, remarketing, and really just anything that you're doing on Google Ads, you can create alignment on the Facebook network as well as just another significantly popular site that you can be advertising on. So as you can see here, it's just really an important aspect of paid search planning to understand which networks you're gonna focus on first, and then how you're gonna actually work through the different networks over time and start to incorporate networks as you see success. Website readiness. Can't stress this enough. You cannot get into paid search if you have an incomplete website or it's in process. 
it doesn't make sense to sign on with an agent or uh, hire somebody internally to do paid search or even work with somebody like WordStream if you know that your website isn't even going to be ready to go for the next three months. You're just paying for essentially nothing to happen. Additionally, once your website is in place and ready to go, you need to have Google Analytics installed and tracking. Google Analytics can be used for conversion tracking and remarketing tracking. You don't have to use it for that, but it's highly recommended. It's free to use. You should make sure that you do have a developer or at least a technical contact established so that if you do need to make changes to your coding, your tracking systems, whatever that might be, you have a place to go to do that. Make sure that you have somebody available to help you in this way. You should also consider limiting the use of third-party domains or different engines that could power your site. For example, if you run a, um, a spa business and your booking engine actually takes somebody away from your domain and brings them into a third-party tool that is totally separate from your brand presentation, more often than not, it's just a bad user experience. And secondarily, a lot of these third-party systems aren't up to snuff in terms of allowing you to track through them. There are plenty that are modernized and really great, but they also happen to be very expensive and tend to be scaled towards larger companies. And finally, you do need to ensure that your conversion actions are defined and in place. We're not counting conversions based on how many pages people are getting to. We're going to count a conversion based on a sale or the fact that a lead was generated and ended up in your CRM and had a phone call. We need to make sure that we've defined these boundaries so that when you actually start running your campaigns, the measurement of the campaign success is very easy to understand because you've pre-planned for this. Can't stress enough how important this is. You just can't go in with, a, with kind of a half-assed effort on your website. You absolutely need to make sure your tracking is in place and you have a technical contact you can work with and you know what you're actually going to define as a conversion or a meaningful engagement on your website. So that's kind of the first portion. That was really intended for everybody who is just about to get started with the Google Ads campaign or is kind of in this mode of like, is this gonna be right for me? Is this something I should really be considering? Hopefully that gave you some ammunition to go back and understand your competition, get a feel with, for what your potential budget can be, and also just make sure that your website is ready to go. Now for those folks that are in that first phase, this next section is still gonna be quite relevant to you. Um, let's say you said yes to all these things, you're ready to go, but you actually are not necessarily ready to start building yet. You need a little bit more information. So how are you going to go about this? So first, we're just going to have a brief moment where we discuss your options for support as it relates to just simply working with Google Ads overall and how you should consider getting help or if you need help at all. What are some of the common tools you should be using to get you started with a paid search effort, specifically through Google Ads? What are the early game rules? And how does that tie to a specific met, uh, metric called impression share? Uh, section three here, we're gonna go a little bit deep. It's gonna be a little bit of the minutia of paid search. Um, but if you stick with me, I think you'll find that it's very helpful and pretty much something that Google is never going to tell you. And then finally, continuous education. The importance of really just keeping yourself informed and some resources that can help you there. So, should you actually consider support? You gotta be honest with yourself in this case. Um, I would assume some of you guys maybe had an agency experience that wasn't that great. You're probably not intending to return to that agency option, but that is an approach here. We can't discount that. There are many agencies that do a great job with paid search, and if you're looking for full-time management in your account and don't wanna touch any of this stuff, that's your option. You could hire somebody full-time to work on this for you. Um, there are plenty of paid search professionals in this world. It's a high demand industry, but the folks that are really good at it could make a completely different um, impact on your business in a positive way and essentially build an entirely new revenue channel for you if you get it right. So hiring full-time is definitely an option. Of course, you could do it yourself. Um, typically, this entails some level of support from Google. You will have a rep from Google that is technically assigned to your account that will occasionally reach out to you with some help. Um, more often than not, they're interested in selling new Google products and getting your budget to expand and spend more. Um, that's not necessarily a bad thing if the motivation is good. Um, but certainly if you're doing it yourself, you're kind of on a bit of an island and more often than not, you're getting sold to by any who is, anybody who's essentially offering support. And finally, it's the do it with me model. Uh, stay tuned for a little bit more detail on that. Hint, hint, that's kind of big, the big section at the end here. Um, really, that's our philosophy at WordStream. And we'll talk you through why we think that's essentially the ideal approach to paid search management. But keep in mind here, you know, there are nearly endless resources that are gonna claim to teach you how to do this from the ground up. Um, you should use them, you know, gather all the information, do the best you can to synthesize it. Make sure all this stuff is from like 2018 or um, 
you know, or more recent, paid search moves so quickly. If you're looking at articles or best practices from 2016 or even 2017, chances are they're actually already out of date. So if you're gonna do this yourself, um, there are some essential tools that you'll need to have and that you're going to need to be familiar with. The first is the Google Ads native interface, which looks like this. Um, this is essentially the new Google Ads interface that came out over the past uh, year and a half or so. Um, if this looks overwhelming, it is because it's it's pretty overwhelming on its own. Um, learning this myself took me you know, at least a year to two years before I felt totally comfortable in the interface. Um, there's a lot here. There's a lot to consider. You're constantly being bombarded with notifications, potential options, settings, things buried behind the scenes. There's quite a bit here to understand. If it's uh, uncomfortable for you to work in a platform like this, certainly consider some level of support over time. Google Ads Editor. Google Ads Editor looks like this. This is a free program that Google provides. It effectively is the idea of um, building in what you would consider maybe Excel level functionality, but into a user interface that's a little bit easier to use. This is a great tool for doing bulk action in your account, creating tons and tons of ads through a simple copy and paste action, replacing your URLs with a simple copy and paste action, copying and pasting campaigns with like the lightning quick press of a button. It's just an exceptionally helpful utility for folks that are going to be managing campaigns in the long run and plan to scale over time. Again, it's a free application from Google. You can download this today and start to get familiar with it. The Google Keyword Planner we talked about earlier, that lives in the Google Ads native interface here, specifically up in this little tools section where you'll see the wrench at the top of the screen. That is the place that you can go to get immediate data on individual click prices, keyword ideas, and just simply building out your account with additional keyword research. Google Analytics, um, this, pro this program is obviously meant to just simply track website behavior. It has a ton of capabilities. I'm not gonna get into all the detail there, um, but it is an excellent platform for you to utilize for paid search tracking and also remarketing. Um, remarketing can be run directly out of Google Analytics. You can generate audiences that you wanna target from there based on all the website behaviors that they've exhibited on your site. So very important platform to be familiar with. It's gonna help you in the long run and also in the short term, just understanding what people are doing on your website. And then finally, trusted third-party resources. Um, you know, this could be somebody as simple as a outside consultant that you've hired to have two or three hours of their time per month in which you can just simply run ideas by them and get validation for what you're doing on Google Ads. Um, this could be a third-party tracking software or CRM system like HubSpot. Um, that naturally integrates with Google Ads and it provides an easy platform for you to understand the lead generation, the sourcing of those leads, and simply what those leads are actually doing. Um, Third-party resources can be very, very helpful, but just make sure that you find um, some information on them where they mention an integration with Google Ads or the ability to work with the platform. That's a key, key aspect of any third-party tool that you might attach to paid search. It has to have an integration to Google Ads in some fashion. Alrighty, so if you're still with me here, what we're gonna get into now is a little bit of minutia um, and a way to think about the first 30 days of your account and some extremely important considerations um, and data points to be familiar with here. So first thing is, you know, you have to meet the condition that your conversion tracking is installed and has been verified by a professional. That needs to be in place prior to running your paid search campaigns. It's a no brainer, um, but I'll continue to restate it as we go. Quite simply, your first campaign should run for about 30 days with minimal changes. You need to establish a baseline of data that you're going to work off of. It's not gonna be perfect within the first 30 days. You might find a lot of wasted spend. Perhaps your strategy doesn't make sense after the initial bit of data, but give it some time to breathe and make sure you're giving it at least 30 days with minimal changes when you launch. Your budget has to be balanced against your impression share and your average cost per click. We're gonna talk about impression share in detail here in the next couple of slides, so stick with me on that one. For bullet four here, you need to consider running your campaigns at 60 plus impression share for the first 30 days. This essentially means that your ads are going to be showing more often than not for search queries that are relevant to your keywords. And also finally at the end here, just make sure you're not deploying your campaigns during a strange kind of seasonality period as it relates to your business. Don't assume that the 30 days in Christmas, if you're an e-commerce business, is going to be reflective of how you're gonna perform for the rest of the year. Find kind of a neutral period in your schedule in which you wanna uh, deploy your paid search campaigns. 
But I mentioned we're going to go deep on impression share here a little bit, so let's take a look. So impression share is something I would argue is probably the third most important metric, if not the most important metric in your account, next to conversions and the overall cost per conversion or total revenue value of what you're driving in paid search. Um, impression share is essentially a barometer for success and failure in your campaigns. So quite simply, um, impression share is the number of impressions that you have received divided by the estimated number of impressions that you could have received. So a simple thought experiment would be USB flash drives in Boston. Maybe 1,000 people on a daily basis will search for a USB flash drive. If your ad shows up 200 times out of those 1,000 searches that happened, your impression share is 20%. That would be a bad impression share. That essentially means that your ad is showing one fifth of the time when somebody is doing a search query that is relevant to you. Think about your own experience when you've searched for a product, or you're looking for something and you're looking at the paid ads. As much as you might hate to say, your assumption is, is that if somebody's in the top positions with a paid ad, you probably think they're a pretty good brand or they know what they're doing or they have something there that allows them to be in that top position because they're doing something well. If you're only showing your ad one fifth of the time, and you might not always be in the number one position, maybe two or three, your brand is not ubiquitous, it's not being associated with the top brands in the industry, and quite frankly, you're just spinning the roulette wheel. You're trying to get lucky with the clicks that you're getting that day and have them find you as a great person to buy from or a great service to take hold of. Now quickly, some jargon here. Search impression share, that is strictly your impression share for the search network in the example I described. You can lose impression share because of your budget. If you have $10 per day and you spent $10 by noon that day, you simply will not serve your ad for the impressions that remain for the rest of the day. So you lost impression share because your budget was exhausted. You can also lose impression share because of your ad rank. So this would be related to bidding and the quality score that is applied to a keyword. You'll see here that the ad rank equation is keyword level bid multiplied by quality score. A quality score is always a number of one out of 10 and the keyword bid is whatever you assign to that keyword. You could not be showing your ad simply because you're not willing to bid up to what some of the market averages are. Perhaps your quality score is just quite poor and it's really holding you back. These are things to consider with impression share, but the importance of this metric is to know that quite frankly, if you're not serving your ad more often than not, you're not in that 60% plus range of impression share, you're going to have a very tough time seeing consistent results in your Google Ads campaigns. So this is a quick view in Google Ads directly where we're showing impression share for a series of campaigns. Um, the actual line graph that you see at the top, the blue line is the impression share for these current campaigns at a high level. And the red line is the lost impression share uh, due to, uh, in this case, ad rank. On the right hand side, it might be hard to see, but you'll then see search impression share as a column, search lost impression share rank, and then search lost impression share budget. This is really transparent stuff. Google is telling you exactly what your actual market position is and how frequently you're able to show your ad. Your Google rep is not going to tell you this. They're not gonna tell you that you're essentially operating at 10% impression share, but your click-through rate's great. Don't worry about it. That's not true. You need to make sure that you're operating amongst the top brands and you're showing your ad exceptionally consistently to keep your brand top of mind with users who are in your industry. We're gonna to return to impression share here at the end of the presentation, kind of towards the last half here. Um, but really quickly, it is important if you're going to deploy your paid search effort to keep yourself informed. Um, Google Ads is ever-changing. Common strategies and best practices will shift with each new update or each new feature. So if you're really serious about staying on top of your Google Ads initiative, you do need to keep up with essentially just the news industry and kind of the rumor mill that goes on around paid search. So some great resources here, shameless plug for the WordStream blog. You've all read some of the material. That might be why you're here now. Um, we stay extremely up to date with the latest Google changes and our partnership with Google does allow us to essentially kind of be on the front lines with what's coming next and how to think about it overall. Search Engine Land's a quality SEM blog. You should check that out. They're always staying right up to date with Google as well. Search Engine Journal, Search Engine Watch. And then of course the Google Ads blog itself. Um, the Google Ads blog is better for you just to know like when something is actually officially released. You'll hear things talked about as a feature that Google might be deploying, but until you actually see it there or published in some sort of a newsletter from Google, it's not necessarily available to everybody. It's usually in a beta or something like that. 
Alrighty. So we're going to get to the kind of last third here um, before we talk about our ideal PPC management solution. Um, but in this instance, we're looking at the idea that your Google Ads account is actually running, um, but you're noticing that it's actually not very effective right now. So what are some things that you can do to help yourself out? So we return to impression share. You do need to analyze this metric and understand how it's impacting your performance. We're also going to talk about how consistent you need to be in your account. Um, there's a couple of little free documents that we're going to give you guys at the end of this webinar. Um, I'm going to show you what those documents are, give you a little bit of an overview, and explain their importance. Um, but quite frankly, one of them is going to give you a checklist of all the things you should consider about a search campaign. And then the second one here is going to give you tasks that you should consider doing week to week, month to month, and quarter to quarter. Kind of a roadmap for just general paid search management. And then finally, if you are in this mode where you are running Google Ads, you've got a little bit of spend built up, when should you actually consider support in this context? So I'm just going to repeat this impression share slide a little bit because I know it is um, somewhat of a new concept for folks and there is some minutiae here. So again, just remember impression share is your ability to essentially serve for a certain number of impressions that are occurring per day. You have the potential to lose impressions because you've already spent your budget in full or you have the potential to lose impressions because your ad rank is too low, you're not meeting a good quality score, you're not meeting your market in terms of the average click prices. So this is a pretty good example of um, kind of a typical user coming in to WordStream needing some support. And if we see a metric like this um, in somebody's uh, grader specifically, if you were to run your AdWords account through that, um, this is a great indicator as to whether or not they're actually going to see success with paid search in the long run. So if you're losing 64% of your impression share, your reality is that you're serving your ad maybe 36% of the time. Again, that's not more often than not. You're only showing your ad roughly one third of the time for keyword queries that are unique to your business or to your industry. That's simply just not going to be good enough to maintain success and see consistent conversions in your account. You can see in this example, this particular advertiser is losing quite a bit of their share just simply because their budget is being exhausted. 25% of that share is being lost due to ad rank. Google will tell you, well, you know, just throw a little bit more budget in there and you'll be fine, just spend more. That's usually not the answer. There's a couple very direct things that you can do before you think about spending more to actually affect your impression share. So the key forces on impression share, geographic scope. Quite frankly, if you're advertising in five states, your impression pool is bigger than if you're advertising in four states. This is very, very easy to understand. Some advertisers struggle with the idea of, well, I've always been able to sell my product in these five states. Paid search is very different. You just need to understand that there's a budget balance against overall volume. And if you simply can't meet the overall volume in those territories, consider scaling back and starting again. Competitor bid rates. If you're not willing to meet the market averages for the average click prices in your industry, and you're one of those folks that just wants to get the lowest possible click price and kind of skim the bottom, you're always going to see limited to no results over time. You might get lucky here and there with an occasion that, uh, with a conversion that's super cheap. That's not going to hold in the long run do you need to be able to meet your competition with market averages on average click price. Your keyword match type strategy has a large effect on your overall impression share. The broad match type in particular essentially represents like nearly infinite potential ad impressions that you could receive on a keyword. Remember that the broad match type is the only match type that Google has where it can essentially take the keyword that you wrote and match it to something that uses none of the words in the original keyword, but is still commonly related or considered to be associated with that keyword. The simple example is if you use a keyword like luxury car and you put that on broad match, you could easily show up for a search query that would be something like high-end vehicle. Very different, but it's technically the same. But being able to predict what your impression is going to be or your overall impression pool for a broad match keyword is quite frankly impossible. Um, you simply need to be aware that broad match can really affect your overall impression pool and ability to actually serve for the majority of those impressions. So when you're starting off, use more conservative match types. Use modified broad, phrase match, and exact match. Those are all very easy to understand and control the type of search query that's actually coming into your account. Keyword scope. This is another easy one. If you have a ton of unique keywords, you have more potential for impressions. Different categories of keywords compete in different spaces. They all have their own respective little universes that they're in with total impressions that they could serve for. So if you have a lot of diversity in your keyword list, pare that down if you're struggling with impression share. 
again, refocus, try and get your campaigns to be pared down to something that allows you to max out your potential ad serving. And yes, you do have to admit it, budget is key to supporting a high impression share. But you should consider all these factors before you raise your budget in any way. You should try and scale back to something that actually makes sense and can get you to a 60% or higher impression share before you just toss some money at it. All right. A quick note on just staying on task with consistent work. Um, Marcos is actually going to reveal a lot about this in terms of just how important it is to just stay active in your account overall. Um, but I do want to show you just a couple of quick documents that you guys are going to receive at the end here to kind of illustrate the point and the importance of just staying consistent with your account. So this is a build out checklist here. You'll be receiving this at the end of the presentation. This is gonna show you each aspect of a campaign that you need to consider for the search network. The settings of the campaign, how your ad groups should be structured, what your text ads should be doing, how many should there be, how should you actually coordinate between path one and path two, and an ad extension check as well. All of these are potential ad extension you could use. You need to check and see if they're applicable to your account. The next document that you guys are gonna get is a campaign management schedule. This will reference a couple of WordStream tools here in particular. But what this will do is it'll tell you what the weekly tasks are that you should be considering doing on a weekly basis what you should be reviewing on a monthly basis, and what you should be considering on a quarterly basis as well. I send this to a lot of my clients just as a cheat sheet to make sure that they're getting into the rhythm of managing their account properly. All right. So when should you consider support in this state? You're running your account, you're not seeing results. Well, the easy one is if you consider all this pretty overwhelming, chances are you do need some help, whether that is from an agency, an internal employee that you may hire, a consultant that you work with, and kind of a do-it-with-me type of model. If a lot of this stuff sounded like science fiction or you noticed all these problems were occurring in your accounts and you want to tackle them, um, either way, you probably do need somebody to help you and validate your decision making. If you can't check your account at least once a week, that is a problem. You need to find a way to either make that part of your routine or find somebody that can help you do that on your own or together. If you're running multiple marketing initiatives and paid search really isn't your real job, um, that's just a recipe for really just a disaster. <laughs> if you're not focused on paid search in general, it's not your real job. There's just such a level of complexity to this stuff that you need to get familiar with. Um, you really do need to consider support if that's kind of your mindset at the moment. And then finally, let's just kind of say you hit a wall. Um, you've been trying to optimize your account um, through and through. You're running out of ideas. Chances are there are plenty of things you haven't considered and some minutia to the data that you may have not noticed. Getting an expert in the space to help you um, is absolutely a way to kind of break out of that funk. And with all that said, we're going to go ahead and give the table to Marcos here. And he's actually going to talk about the secret recipe to Google ad success and kind of what really comes down to the WordStream model. Awesome, thanks, Jeff. Uh, so, guys, I know half of you have Google Ads accounts, half of you don't. Um, either way, I think there's a value add in our model, uh, which I'll cover in a minute. But to just kind of harp back on what Jeff was covering, there really are, if you are looking for support and, and serious about um, getting a good return from your paid search campaigns, you really should consider your options and. Uh, it's not listed here, but of course you can do it yourself, but most people I talk to who go that route, uh, it's often a disaster. So um, you can either hire somebody full time, um, which is expensive and you know you, you wanna make sure that you're hiring the right person that knows your industry. Um, you can outsource it to an agency, which is definitely expensive. Uh, not everybody can afford agency fees. And again, um, an agency might not know your industry or your business as well as you. So uh, Jeff and I have analyzed hundreds and hundreds of client accounts and, and we do find that using a, a software and having a consultant to put a game plan together um, and have you be involved in a lot of the changes that need to be made is typically uh, the best kind of hybrid solution where you're involved, you're getting in, making changes to your campaigns uh, and you still have an industry expert uh, to really uh, makes sense and, and heads of tails of all that we've already covered so far. So 
um, if you feel if you don't use Google Ads yet and you feel really overwhelmed of uh, what we went over today, um, we can coach you, mentor you, educate you, uh, and help you better understand this. So we find that this third option here, using a software and consulting option, is the best way to go. Um, and what I want to point out here is really just some of the research we've seen. We've analyzed thousands of accounts, um, and it really uh, you really need to be involved in uh, pay-per-click to be successful. And we find that over half of advertisers haven't checked their account um, you know, in the past month, another quarter haven't logged in uh, once over the last 90 days. Um, and almost 40% of marketers uh, feel that their uh, campaigns aren't very successful. So um, you know, this is a real problem here and um, you need to be getting in, staying up with industry uh, trends and again, there's a strong correlation between um, activity and account performance. So if you're getting in regularly, you're working on your campaigns, you're, you're gonna feel a lot more confident about those results. Um, and that's exactly what kind of our software solution uh, was built around so that you're feeling confident to, and, and you're making the time to get into your campaign. So uh, these are some of the challenges that we see in uh, campaign management. So again, uh, tying it back to low activities, it does. Um, you need to be taking time to get in, and it does take active management to be successful. Um, if you're not taking activity regularly, uh, you will end up seeing less uh, effective ads, a low ROI. You know, your cost per click will increase. You just really won't get a lot from your budget, so uh, you have to stay on top of things. Um, and you can waste a lot of your budget on unique search terms, like Jeff referenced earlier. A lot of clients of ours are come in using broad match and Google spending their budget on a lot of irrelevant traffic. So you really need to stay on top of who Google's showing your ads to and, and get a better control over your account. So more qualified people are seeing your ads. Um, so <laughs> don't panic uh, if you're feeling overwhelmed over all this. Um, you know, if you're if you're one of those uh, advertisers who aren't getting in the their account because you don't have the time or you don't have the knowledge or you can't keep up with innovation. Or if you don't know where to start, but you do know you want to get some Google ad campaigns set up, uh, we do have a service here. Um, Jeff is actually the manager of this program. It's called our Jumpstart. So um, if you want to consult with one of our uh, in-house experts to learn about your business, um, really do a lot of, take the guesswork out of getting an account created uh, this option is available. So if you want to just start from scratch, um, whether you're just starting fresh or if you have campaigns and you want to just abandon them all together and get a fresh start, this would be for you. Um, and this is what's included. So we'll build out two search network campaigns. Um, we'll do the keyword research, create your ads, um, help you with the bidding and, and setting a realistic budget depending on your industry. Um, so if that is something you guys want to check out, this is what that timeline would look like. Again, we would set up a call with you, uh, really learn about the business, and then get to work on creating your campaigns. And then you can join in and take a look at the campaigns before we get them live on Google just to make sure uh, any changes uh, need to be made. Uh, and then there's ongoing uh, support. So once we've built out your account, uh, WordStream offers a software solution if you weren't aware uh, this essentially organizes your workflow, uh, gives you a really easy to understand uh, way to, to get into your account. It keeps you accountable. Um, it's doing a lot of that analysis on your behalf. So you log in once a week. Our system will point you in the right direction as far as which changes need to be made uh, to make sure that you're getting the best possible return on your ad spend. Plus, you can work with an expert like Jeff on an ongoing uh, cadence. So typically our uh, Clients are meeting with our consulting team bi-weekly. They're getting in their accounts, and um, this pairs up kind of well with what Jeff had mentioned earlier with the checklist. So are we taking the right actions week over week, month over month, quarter over quarter? Uh, so uh, it's nice to have someone to coach you and, and really have someone in, in your corner and a second set of eyes on the account to make sure everything's trending in the right direction. Uh, and that's what this uh, consulting would look like. So there's really not much that our consultants can help you with as it relates to pay-per-click. 
Um, again, as Jeff mentioned earlier, uh, we're staying up to speed with industry trends, making sure our clients are being more proactive versus reactive. Uh, and um, this person's really gonna make sure, again, you're leveraging strategies, helping you create new campaigns, um, helping you expand uh, and, and really scale up your business uh, through paid search. So um, if this sounds like a good fit for you, uh, you can talk to someone on our team um, and we're happy to answer any questions on this program. All righty. Thank you so much, guys. That was packed with information. I'm sure people are just, their wheels are spinning. They've learned so much, um, and we did have tons of questions come through. Um, but before we get to the questions, um, as Marcos just talked about, we have a couple offers for everyone on the line. Let us know if you want to learn more about that Jumpstart program um, specifically, or if you would just like one of our experts here at WordStream to take a look at your current Google Ads account and give you a free consultation, kind of assess how things are going, um, and and give you some assistance there. Um, so while you guys are deciding that, let's get into some questions. Uh, I did want to start with a little possible client shout out. Um, someone said on the line, we have a monthly call with WordStream to help review our literal hundreds of ad accounts and it's been so awesome. You help educate new people who need outside validation. So I just wanted to let everyone on the line hear that little piece of feedback. <laughs> um, alrighty. So, in the beginning, there was a couple, you know, you talked a lot about keywords, um, and there were some questions in terms of e-commerce and keywords and the shopping network, and like, how how can you differentiate the shopping network versus search? Do you need keywords for e-commerce campaigns? Just a little more insight on that would be helpful. Cool, absolutely. Um, so a, a big thing to understand up front, um, Google shopping campaigns are powered by what is called a shopping feed. A shopping feed is literally a giant spreadsheet that has product titles, how much they cost, image links, links to the actual products themselves and the landing pages. And that is what Google Shopping campaigns use to serve your ads. So to state it plainly, Google Shopping campaigns actually do not use keywords. They don't use keywords that you're actually selecting and bidding on directly. What Google does is it looks at the product titles and the descriptions of the products, any other identifiers like barcode numbers or manufacturer part numbers, and it will look at all that information in your Google feed sheet, and it will use that to serve your ads to search queries it thinks are relevant to the information that exists in your feed. So in a way, with Google Shopping campaigns, your keywords are kind of automated based on what is in that giant spreadsheet feed. Search campaigns are the traditional setup where you are picking and choosing the keywords that you wanna run, you're writing those keywords, you're defining the match type on those keywords, and you're applying bids to those keywords as well. That is significantly more traditional. Um, and at this point in the e-commerce space, Google Shopping has essentially outpaced search campaigns, not only in terms of total traffic and buyer behavior on those types of ads, but it actually is a little bit cheaper right now because it's an earlier, or it's a newer campaign type and search has just been around for so long that the market on search is really saturated with advertisers. So that price floor has really gone up in terms of average click prices. Google Shopping is starting to creep up, but it's just a younger program. So it's a little bit cheaper. And again, it is purely oriented towards e-commerce advertisers and technically doesn't actually use keywords. It just drives everything from that product feed. Awesome, thank you, it's very helpful. Um, and then for those people who um, have been trying out search or are just starting to set things up, what exactly are the conversions you should be tracking? Is it different for different people? And then as kind of like a follow-up to that, are tracking softwares like ClickMagic redundant to Google or should you have extra tracking in place besides what Google offers you? So um, good question overall. So conversion actions are, are absolutely gonna be context dependent to each business. Um, if you are a roofing and siding and windows contractor, a conversion for you is probably gonna be a phone call that maybe lasts five minutes, or perhaps it's an inquiry on your site for a request a quote form. What I would say generally about conversion tracking is you need to make sure that what you're actually counting as a conversion is considered to be a meaningful interaction with your business. Do not track total pages viewed or how long somebody spends on your website. You need to track whether they actually engaged with your business in an open and honest way. So make sure that that's kind of the core philosophy going into what you're actually choosing to track. Um, to follow up on that with like third party tracking systems. Um, 
I do personally think that a lot of these are redundant at this point. Um, there's a reason why most aren't being kept up with and a lot of them are fading away quite quickly. Um, Google Analytics as a platform is free, exceptionally robust, it has a ton of documentation behind it, and it's going to track and do everything that you might need one of those third-party tools to actually do. The other part that's important about something like Google Analytics is that it does have natural integration with very um, common kind of advanced systems that have moved beyond some of those third-party tracking systems. So, for example, if you're using a Salesforce CRM or you're using a HubSpot CRM, um, Google Analytics and Google Ads platforms are designed to integrate with those at this point. Um, there are certainly tracking softwares that are great that might offer some unique insights, but the honest truth is that more often than not, you can find a solution for essentially what you wanted that tracking software to do um, through a custom solution on something like Google Analytics. Awesome. Um, and let's see. So. Do you have any strategies for standing out from other ads that are also above the fold? They know that that's a goal is to be above the fold, but once you're there, do you have any strategies to help stand out from that crowd? A couple basic things at first. Um, take advantage of all of the ad extensions that are available to you. So ad extensions are what I would call kind of bells and whistles. They're things that you can attach to the ad copy that you've handwritten. Um, these are things like pricing tables that will show you the different prices between your services. Um, it can list the brands that you provide. Um, they can run promotions during set periods of time or set holidays, for example. So you can communicate a lot through your ad copy, not only through the ad itself, but through the ad extensions that Google is giving us um, the ability to utilize. A couple of other tips and tricks for like standing out as a brand in ad copy. Uh, call out your brand name with something visual. Put the little trademark symbol next to it. Put the copyright symbol next to it or put the registered copyright symbol. These are little things where if you're in the space where you have four different ads and eight results on the page and it looks like there's a lot of clutter there, just by like visually calling out your brand name in headline one, for example, of the ad, that might be enough to keep that in somebody's memory because somebody might be writing all their ads without necessarily distinguishing their brand name with a little symbol like that and it just kind of gets lost in the muck of the page. So that's a, a unique little way. It's just kind of one little handy trick to use. Um, you know, you'll read a lot of blog articles that will tell you to be a little goofy and wacky with your ad copywriting. Um, certainly, you know, make sure it's context dependent. You certainly wouldn't want to do that in a personal injury space or something as it relates to like medical services or what have you. Um, but there are plenty of opportunities to um, be a little whimsical with your writing. Like the, the whole thing with Google Ads is that there's just so much data that you can receive based on testing and experiments. You know, you could write um, an ad that is just like so rote and straightforward, um, you know, barely has what you would consider anything exciting about it. It's just describing your brand and your industry and pit that against something that's doing completely something completely different and start to figure out the nuances between those sets of copy. Awesome. That was super helpful. Um, there was also some people looking for strategies on ad rank specifically. I feel like some of what you just said could help with that as well, but anything else you had in mind? Yeah, so ad rank again is the bid that is applied to an individual keyword multiplied by the quality score that Google has assigned that keyword. And quality score again is a number one through 10. Your keyword bid is what you assign that keyword bid to be. So when the question comes to me, how do I improve ad rank? That puts you in two worlds. It puts you into how to consider your bidding strategy and how to optimize for quality score. Optimizing for quality score is born more so out of what your campaign structure is. Do you have your ad group segmented in a way that you can write really specific ad copy for really small specific groups of keywords and also attach a landing page that is highly relevant to that ad copy in that small group of keywords? If you create that chain of alignment between your keyword ad copy and landing page, and do that in a very segmented, compartmentalized way in your account, Google will reward you for that because you're dedicating curated ad copy and curated landing page content for small subsets of keywords that are very focused on a type of search. So that's a very, very important aspect just behind quality score. Trying to get your quality score up from like three, four, five and get it towards a six, seven, or an eight, which is where you start seeing some great benefits. It usually entails writing more complete ad copy, improving your landing page experience, and creating a more segmented structure within your Google Ads account. As it relates to bidding, your bidding strategy can be a lot of different things. Google pushes a lot of automation right now. There are automated bid strategies for pushing conversions. There are automated bid strategies for gaining a certain position level on the page. There is also the traditional manual bidding approach. If you're doing manual bidding, that is a direct lever of control. So if you're losing impression share due to ad rank, 
take your bid from two dollars and push it up to four a very simple example it's ham-fisted right but that is a way to improve your ad rank if you're hitting a wall with quality score and it's just not going up and you're doing everything you can quite frankly that happens there are ways where you can crack that quality score a little bit better but sometimes you just hit a wall and you just simply need to meet your competition where they are in terms of raising your bid so when it comes to improving ad rank you need to put yourself in the bidding strategy world and the quality score optimization world. One should take priority over the other based on what you think is causing the, the most dramatic effect. Cool. Um, well, we're just about at three o'clock, so I'm going to wrap things up and just thank you guys for all the valuable insight. Um, we still have the chat box kind of going, but some of it's a little bit more specific to their industry and things like that. So we'll try to get back and look at these questions and connect you with someone who can answer your um, question on a one-to-one. -one. Um, and we hope that you all will join us on our next webinar. Uh, we usually try to have a couple each month, so keep an eye out for the next webinar invite. Thank you.